President, thank you for being in North Carolina today. As you saw firsthand, North Carolina has been hit hard. This disaster in Western North Carolina is catastrophic and unprecedented. Today, the President and I, uh, via helicopter, were able to see some of the damage. Towns wiped off the map bridges damaged or completely destroyed, critical infrastructure and water systems, electrical grids, communications, all remain seriously damaged, countless homes and businesses that are lost. An entire region of our state is still in a dangerous situation. The good thing is that 92 search and rescue teams have saved countless lives and the search for people still goes on. We're grateful to the 18 states who have sent help to us, thousands of line workers and utility workers, transportation workers, all trying to bring this area back more than a thousand National Guard soldiers are rescuing people. They've rescued more than 1,400 people so far, and they are deploying food and water and other supplies, many thousands of pounds. We're grateful for the quick actions and close communications that we have had with the President and with the FEMA team, Mr. Secretary, we're grateful to you and the President for sending Administrator Chriswell, who has been on the ground with me in Western North Carolina, as we are working to coordinate this massive, massive surge of help to Western North Carolina. And Mr. President, we know that we have made a lot of asks of you, and we're grateful for your ear and for your actions. Uh, this is going to be a long and difficult recovery, but talking with person after person in Western North Carolina, I know, I know that we can come back and that we will come back because the people of Western North Carolina are resilient. Working together, we can get through this, and I am proud to recognize my friend, the United States, the President of the United States of America, Joe Biden. Thank you, Gov. Good afternoon, everyone. I don't have to tell this group that uh, Hurricane Helene has been a storm literally of historic proportions. The damage is still being assessed, but and many people are still unaccounted for. So I'm here to say the United States, the nation, has your back. The nation has your back. We're not leaving your back on your feet completely. You know, uh, we're in a situation where earlier this morning uh, I met with state and local police in Greenville, South Carolina. Then I took an aerial tour of Western North Carolina uh, to survey the damage. And uh, came here in Raleigh to receive a briefing from all of you. And uh, we've been working uh, nonstop to provide the support that you need and the survivors need. You know, it goes, uh, my heart goes out to everyone who has experienced the unthinkable loss, but we're here for you. And I want to thank Republican Governor of South Carolina and the Democratic Governor of North Carolina and all the elected officials who focused on the task at hand. In a moment like this, we put politics aside. At least we should put it all aside, and we have here. There are no Democrats or Republicans, there are only Americans. And our job is to help as many people as we can as quickly as we can and as thoroughly as we can. You know, that's why even before the storm hit, I directed the entire federal government to use every possible resource to help communities across the nation, across the region, get ready. We deployed over 1,000 first responders throughout the Southeast. I immediately approved emergency declarations as soon as I received the request from your governors. Today, I approve the request of Governor Cooper for the federal government to cover 100 percent, 100 percent of all the costs for debris removal, emergency protective measures for six months, all the costs.
this, this is really matters. There are 70 North Carolinians who are dead and 100 more who are unaccounted for. And uh, much of Asheville is underwater. It was, I've flown over an awful lot of uh, storm-damaged areas since I've been president. Matter of fact, most of them in forest fires. And uh, I, we've, with the FEMA director and I have flown over more, more forest that's been taken down to the ground because of fires and a whole range of other reasons than makes up the entire state of Maryland. And, uh, and so I've seen a lot, but we're looking at Asheville, and just imagine what it must have been like sitting along those rivers and streams as all that rain came down. What, 19 inches of rain, something like that? Incredible amount of rain. Watching homes, you can see homes that are moved from, clearly from one side of the river down the river to another side of the river. And I uh, can only imagine what it's like to uh, have been in one of those homes. And uh, much of Asheville was underwater. Much of it was underwater. It was a beautiful, beautiful part of the country. I've been to Asheville before. It's a magnificent part of Appalachia. Much of it was underwater. Communities like Chimney Rock are reduced to piles of wood and debris. I mean, that's, you look down, that's what you see as we flew over in a circle in a helicopter. And uh, this is going to pay for, uh, this will pay for the urgent work we need to clear landslides, to provide shelters and supply food and medicine. But today, I'm also directing the Department of Defense to move up 1,000 soldiers to reinforce North Carolina's National Guard because they need additional assistance. These soldiers are out of Fort Liberty here and right here in North Carolina and are available for responsive operations starting today. Starting today. They're going to spend, they're going to speed up the delivery of life saving supplies like food, water, medicines to isolate the communities over what the Pentagon calls the last tactical mile. The last tactical mile. Simply put, We've got the capabilities to get the job done, and we're going to get it done fast as possible. I've also directed the development of Starlink, the deployment of Starlink satellites. Um, 50, 50 are in place right now, more are going to be put in place so people in places like Canton can call for help and reach the ones that love the loved ones who they're not sure of anybody who knows that phone because of no cell service. And uh, on top of this, the FEMA teams are offering free temporary housing and hotel rooms for eligible residents. They're continuing to send helicopters and trucks to deliver hundreds of thousands of meals and liters of water in communities every single day. And they're, and they're knocking, literally knocking on doors and visiting shelters to register folks so they can receive assistance to buy the urgent needs that they have because they've lost everything, like prescriptions and baby formula and essentials. This is a direct assistance that is being delivered here today, not, not later, but today. And so, but folks, it's going to take, cost us billions of dollars. It's going to cost billions of dollars to deal with this storm and all the, all the communities affected. And Congress has an obligation to ensure the, stores, the states have the resources they need. Let me close with this. Nobody can deny the impact of climate crisis anymore. At least I hope they don't. They must be brain dead if they do. Scientists report that with warming oceans powering more intense rains, storms like Colleen are getting stronger and stronger. Not going to get, not going to get less. They're going to get stronger. Today in North Carolina, I saw the impacts of that fury. Massive trees uprooted. Homes literally swept off their foundations, swept down rivers. You know, families are heartbroken, but they're also neighbors helping neighbors. That's the other thing we were talking about coming over here in the, in the automobile. It's amazing when people step up when people are in need because they're neighbors. I think we underestimate that. That's why one of the things I did with all the, all I put in place in terms of everything from the Recovery Act on down is that we've actually invested more funding under my administration in the so-called red states than blue states, because the need was greater. They're larger states, they're larger territories. Because this, everyone, this is about America. It's not about one state or another, Democrat or Republican, it's about America. And volunteers, first responders are standing side by side, people leaning on each other to pick up the pieces that are left over. And that's the best of America. I, I firmly believe, and I've said this, said this, said it for three years, there's nothing beyond our capacity to do. Nothing, nothing, nothing. This is United States of America, for God's sake. Whenever we work together, we've never failed to get something done. 
So I thank everyone who has been working tirelessly and cold, wet, and hungry to, to get the job done. And Kamala and I are here until the end. I want to God bless you all, and I'd like to turn it now over to Director Will Ray. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> On behalf of the State Emergency Response Team, the folks you see here, the folks downrange at our regional coordination centers in the West, as well as those in the impacted communities working night and day, welcome to North Carolina and to the State Emergency Operations Center. This afternoon, we wanted to give you a quick operational update on the impacts of Helene and on the whole of community response that you see here. Be beginning uh, last week, September 25th, what began three days of extreme and unrelenting precipitation that has led to catastrophic flooding and damage to Western North Carolina. We had saturated soils upwards of nine inches prior to the bands of Helene entering North Carolina. And as you mentioned, we saw significant rainfall across Western North Carolina with the highest rainfall amounts measuring over 31 inches in a three day period in Yancey County. With this event, we experienced the full suite of impacts of a hurricane to include tropical and hurricane force winds across our mountains. With the highest uh, wind gustage around Mount Mitchell at 106 miles an hour. We had eight confirmed tornadoes across North Carolina as a result of this event, and our peak outages were over a million. Those outages are now due to the work of the partnerships in this room uh, and the hard work of the crews are down to about 350,000. The impacts from Helene caused flash flooding emergencies for 21 different counties across Western North Carolina, which is only used during rare and life-threatening events. The impacts were further compounded by the spread and speed of the water. From an operational standpoint, we're really focused on three things currently. One, continuing life safety missions. Two, the increased speed of commodity distribution into the western part of the state. And three, support of our infrastructure, particularly healthcare, water, power, and communications. The state emergency response team here remains activated at the state EOC and along with our regional coordination center in the West to continue to support our local jurisdictions in the critical work that they do. We currently have 16 county EOCs that remain open with 29 shelters with just over 1,200 occupants. We have four state operated shelters, state supported shelters as well in four counties, Henderson, Rowan, Buncombe and Catawba. We also have three mass feeding sites supported by our VOAD partners that are distributing hot meals to 30 sites across 10 counties. Our response footprint has grown significantly and we're grateful for the support, not just from the 22 states that have sent teams to support us, but also from our FEMA team and, and other members of the federal family. We currently have 24 search and rescue teams from the state of North Carolina in the area of impact, along with 13 that are, that are continued to be deployed via our interstate mutual aid and we have continued to increase the number of federal teams. It is now up to 18, and that accounts for over 1,600 personnel operating in the area of impact right now to support, again, our local jurisdictions that um, had such significant impact. Across all those teams, we've had over 5,000 search and rescue interactions. This could be rescues, evacuations, assists, shelter assessments. The teams continue to, continue to do really incredible work in some pretty austere conditions. We have 26 aircraft that are currently in the area of operations and so far over the course of the event have lifted over 700,000 pounds of cargo into the impacted area. At the direction of the Secretary of Defense with your approval yesterday, we began moving in and, and integrating the Title 10 aviation assets. We will also uh, begin to integrate the, uh, the additional um, DOD workforce today as we move in tomorrow and General Hunt will cover more of that specifically. As you can see from the federal force laydown slide, not only do we have Title 10 assets here, we continue to have federal search and rescue, U.S. Army Corps, EPA, a very large contingent of our health and human services partners that are supporting both hospitals with two disaster medical assistance teams, as well as supporting the state in health care infrastructure assessment and other uh, health and medical needs such as federal ambulances. As you see, sir, this really takes hold of community. It's local, state, federal, tribal, at all levels, nonprofits, volunteer agencies, and the private sector to actually accomplish this, this mission. Finally, we've already begun to implement some of our recovery programs. 
We currently have over 33,000 individuals that have already registered for individual assistance, and we are working to turn on additional programs to quickly support these impacted communities so we get them off on the right foot to rebuild quickly. At this time, sir, uh, I believe we'll transition to a deeper dive brief from our colleagues. Uh, we'll pause uh, briefly at this time.